Hey guys, Gabe Bolt here. So I just wanted to talk about how I got my first multifamily at the age of 22 and just really encourage you guys that anybody can really do this. You don't have to do anything special. You don't have to be anybody special. You don't have to be making a ton of money to really change your entire life and really push yourself forward to success and really free up a lot of time and uh, a lot of energy. The point of this is definitely not to um, brag because there's really nothing to brag about but more of like an encouragement and then also um, I kind of wish I had learned some of these things and knew some of these things when I was starting out because that could have shaved um, a couple years off of it but anyways I just wanted to go over a few of them with you so from the age of like 15 till probably 18 I was a hardcore gamer I did a lot of gaming I did a lot of black ops I was one of the top 100 or something like that in one of the black ops um, so I spent a lot of time doing that and just wasting time and money. Um, I'm a very addictive personality, so I try to avoid um, certain things. But anyways, I started working for my parents at around the age of 11. I was working part-time um, for my dad's company, and then it ended up being more closer to full-time. Um, so I'd been working for quite a few years, and then when I hit 16, I had about $5,000 saved up. Um, and I bought my first car. It was a 2002 Honda Civic. I bought it from my parents. Um, but I had really gotten into that mindset of just saving money because I knew how hard I worked for it and I didn't really want to waste it on stuff because I was just as happy um, doing free stuff and I don't really need to... We'll go this way. And I don't really need to um, waste money on things that I'll be just as happy doing something else. So anyways, I bought that car and then I didn't know what I wanted to go to college for. And everybody was telling me, hey, you know, go to college, get a good job, get a good education. Um, and I kind of didn't know what to go to college for and I didn't want to spend four years of my life doing this because I had really hated school and I didn't want to spend four more years just, um, you know, just spinning my wheels if I didn't even know what I was going for. So I did what any 18 year old would do and I googled top paying jobs that you don't need to go to college for and I saw real estate so I was like, hey, I could probably sell real estate, it doesn't look that hard. Uh, looks kind of fun. I like to see old houses. So I started to do that. I got my license um, when I was 18 and then I bought a newer Honda Civic. It was like a 2008 because um, when I was showing up, I didn't want to show up in this car that was kind of falling apart. Um, so I got a 2008 Honda Civic and that's been a really uh, been a really great car for me. And then I did real estate for two, two and a half years. Um, so I sold like 10 properties probably. Um, and I made a decent amount of money, but I didn't love it and I really wasn't taking it seriously because I was 19, 20 years old and I was an idiot and I was more, um, I didn't really, I was living at home so I didn't have that urgency. And then also, I wasn't too serious about life and I was just really more focused on having fun and going out and doing stuff and, and being, you know, an 18 year old. Um, so that didn't really work out great, but then I learned, I, I read the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and that kind of changed my mindset about um, about finances and about what I wanted to do and give me the concept of financial freedom and financial independence and how you can buy assets instead of liabilities, something that will put money in your pocket every single month instead of something that just drains money from you constantly. So I did that and then I forget how I learned about house hacking. Um, Actually, I didn't even know it was called house hacking at the time. I just knew this was something I wanted to do. I wanted to buy a multifamily. Like a two to four unit property and you can live in one of them and rent the other ones out. And those will pay all your mortgage taxes and insurance, all your living expenses, and then you'll be able to live for free. And if you're able to live for free for the rest of your life, that changes the enti your entire life. And I just put you on the fast track to hit the next one. And then let's say if I find a different job that I want to do, I have the freedom to, since I have very low living expenses, if I want to take a job that pays me 50% of what I'm making right now. I could quit and take that job and I would still be able to pay all my bills because my bills are so low because I did this house hacking. Um, but anyway, so I had taken that job full time uh, working for my dad and kind of stopped doing real estate. And that gave me what I needed in order to approve for this house. So when, so something that I didn't know at the time and I wish somebody had told me is when you're going to apply for your first property, um, you're going to need a few different things. So I needed three lines of credit. I did not have three lines of credit because I didn't have a credit card. 
I had very low expenses and whatever. So I spent some time building up my credit and got some credit cards. So I had this kind of goal in my head of $25,000 is what I need in order to buy this first property. And by the time I actually got around to buying the property, I had about 30 grand um, saved up and I was making uh, you know, like 30 to $40,000 a year at the time. So I wasn't making that much. I was just saving like you would not believe for that like two years is pretty much um, how I saved that up. It was just saving like 90, 90, 95% of my income, not spending on anything. Cause I knew once I got this, I would have so much freedom for the rest of my life. I would never have to pay rent again. Like right now I make a couple hundred bucks a month while I'm living here. So it's like living at home. Um, it's, it's really cool. It's like living at your parents. Um, and then when I go ahead and get the next property here, then I'll be cash flowing a thousand dollars, 1200 bucks a month from this property and I'll still live for free in the next property. So that's just once you, if you can make that one decision, I knew if I could make this one decision now, then that would pretty much take the stress, the financial stress off for the rest of my life. I knew I would be able to save that. Let's say if I was spending a thousand dollars a month on rent, then I would be able to save around $12,000 a year. And you do that for 12 years and it's $120,000. Plus if you had invested that, that would be a lot more. And then if you're continuing to get more and you're actually making money, that's just like a huge thing just from that one decision to buy this instead of going somewhere and renting. Now, if my parents hadn't let me stay, I would have probably gone somewhere and rented and got like one bedroom in a house and just lived with a bunch of other people to keep it cheap. Because I realized like if you live like a college student, which I never was, I'm not smart enough. Um, but if you live like a college student for a little bit, then you're able to live like nobody else for the rest of your life. Like it's that, that one year, that one, two years of making these choices and living a lifestyle that probably isn't optimal will give you freedom for the rest of your life. You're not talking about 10 years of being always deprived. You're talking about living like everybody else, except I didn't get into a ton of debt. I didn't have consumer debt. I wasn't wasting money. Um, doing things. I, I did waste some money. I went to some concerts and some football games and all that type of stuff, but it wasn't like crazy amounts. It was like once a month, once every other month, I'd go do something crazy or stupid. Uh, but anyways. So at this point, I was working with a um, realtor. She was the one who had actually mentored me when I was doing real estate. And she helped me look. So we looked at like probably uh, 10 different places, maybe 15 and looked at hundreds of them for about, uh, I think it was about six months, I looked at every single property that came on the market and I learned how to run the numbers and I just continued to run numbers on so many different properties that eventually I knew them well enough where I could just look at a property when it came on and know like this is a good deal and I know that this is gonna cash flow and I know that I can live there for free and not have to pay any of the mortgage. Um, so when this property did come on, I was able to go ahead and get it. And I think I went over like that day or the day after that it came on the market and we put it in an offer like right away and it worked out really well for me. So like I said, I had had that $25,000 that was now around $30,000 um, from years of saving everything I was making because I was only making like 30 to 40,000 a year. So it took me a while to save this because I had other expenses as well. And then I had this money saved up. So what I ended up doing in order to buy this house very cheaply and not spend, you know, 20% down, cause that would have been, uh, let's see on a $200,000 property, it would have been $40,000 and I did not have that saved. So I was able to get this property uh, with an FHA loan. So an FHA loan is a three and a half percent down loan. Um, so the good thing about this is uh, again, you're only paying three and a half percent. So it cost me about $6,000 at closing is what I ended up bringing. Um, and then we had other fees for like the closing costs, the home inspection and all that type of stuff. Um, and then including the rehab in this unit, it was under $15,000 uh, to get this property. So that is the good thing is that it costs very, very little out of pocket. And that's a very low barrier uh, for entry. And I think anybody could save that up in a few years if you really, uh, if you really focus on it, even if you're young and kind of dumb like me, you're able to do that if you're willing to sacrifice, not wasting money on a bunch of different things. So the downside of an FHA is that you're gonna have PMI. So I have to pay about $160 a month, I believe it is, um, for my private mortgage insurance. And since I'm only putting three and a half percent down, they're gonna have this mortgage insurance to kind of ensure that the bank is 
getting their money back because it's more risky than 20% down because I don't have as much skin in the game. So that's going to cost me more every month. But since I was able to save so much money at closing, I'm able to invest that at a higher rate um, and make more money than I would with the PMI. So I'm totally fine with paying the PMI because what I have saved, um, I'm able to invest and make more than that. So it kind of evens itself out. So I think what the really cool thing about this is, is that it's about one years of rent that I had saved up. So if I was renting something like this, it would cost me anywhere from like a thousand to $1,200 a month. But since I was able to save that, like $12,000 or $15,000, then I'm able to never pay rent again for the rest of my life, really, if I choose to stay here. Or you can save up all that money every year and you could bring it into the next property, which is what I'm doing now. Um, I'm looking to get my next property. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm gonna start looking in the next couple of weeks here. And that's all while making, um, you know, 40, 50, $60,000 a year. Uh, depending on my point here and just saving a lot of it So that's why it's so important about your savings rate as opposed to how much you're making because you can really get in at the beginning the low barrier to entry at that that FHA loan at three and a half percent down now It might be more expensive in different parts of the country um, Like if you're in New York say it's gonna be like a multi-million dollar property So that's still gonna be a thing, but if you're living in New York you're probably making a lot more money than I am so it kind of just it evens itself out. And I probably would say that if you're in one of the bigger cities, you're probably not gonna do the same strategy I'm doing. You do a totally different strategy. Um, this kind of works in my market. So the property that I bought was $200,000 and I put, again, that 6,000 down. So another thing that the bank is gonna look for is they're gonna want you to have six months um, cash on reserve. So they wanna have, um, if the property is completely vacant, they wanna see that I could float the mortgage for six months. Uh, so that is also part of why I had that twenty-five, that thirty thousand dollars instead of just having like ten thousand dollars and just barely squeaking through. Um, I don't believe they would have let me do that. But so with the FHA loan, they are going to require you to live in this property for at least a year as your primary residence. So if you're looking to just buy a rental, then you're probably going to use that twenty percent down loan. Um, but since I was living here and house hacking, then I'm able to use that three and a half percent down. So the good thing about using the 20% down is again, you're not gonna have that PMI. Um, and probably I'll do that on my next property, but for this one, it was a really great way to get started and just jumpstart your savings, jumpstart your investing. So the next one, I'm probably gonna use a 20% down loan and I would use the Burr strategy. So the Burr strategy is pretty much you buy a property that needs to be fixed up um, or has bad rent or there's some type of problem with it. So you buy it relatively cheaply, you rehab it, and then you like, you know, you raise the value of it, you rent it out, and then you refinance the property. So you have it, let's say they were all renting at $1,000 a month, which was far below uh, market rent, so let's just say, and then you're able to go in there, you're able to paint everything, put down new floors, maybe a new kitchen somewhere. So then you go ahead and you refinance it. So let's say if it was worth 300,000 before, now it's worth 450,000 or 400,000, so you would get back your 20% that you put in plus the money that you use for the rehab because you refinance it at that higher price. And then you're able to use that cash again and go ahead and get another property. So that's the burst strategy in a nutshell. And that's something that tons and tons of real estate investors have done. It's just a really, really solid strategy um, that really that allows you to recycle the money and just keep using it in different places. Again, if you're running your numbers right and if you're finding the right type of property. So that's probably what I'm going to do next. So that's it. I just really want to show you guys that this is something that's doable um, for anybody. No matter how much you're making, you just really need to make up your mind that this is something you want to do. And I wish I had seen something like this and, and known that this was a possibility. Because so many people don't know that this is even a possibility. And if you do go ahead and get a house or a condo or something instead, that's really going to make a huge impact on your finances. So instead of renting this place, I just own the building and I'm staying in the same place around where I would be anyway. So it's really worked out great for me. It's just doing things a little bit differently um, to save hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars over your lifetime. So that's what I got. If you got some value, please hit that like button. And if you want to see future content uh, like this and you're not subscribed already, please remember to subscribe. It makes a huge difference. Very helpful. Thank you.